I wasn't planning this. After the disappointing Renault Clio, I decided to ignore the small crossover with an awkward name, Capture. However, in the comments you asked me to test it, so just before Christmas I gave Renault a ring and they had one available in less than two weeks. Prices of the Renault Capture start at around 15,500 euros, which is a bit more expensive than Peugeot 2008, but way cheaper than Opel Mokka. Of course, for 15,500 grand, you won't get the car you see here. This one costs around 21,000. However, the whole thing looks interesting enough for me to give it a try. But before we get there, let's take a walk around. Under the bonnet is a four-cylinder, uh, 120 horsepower, 1.2 petrol engine. It's a better choice than the three-cylinder 0.9 TCE and it costs about a grand less than a four-cylinder 1.5 liter diesel. The 377 liter boot is slightly bigger than the Opel Mokka and Peugeot 2008. You get hooks for your shopping bags and thanks to this double floor you get a flat loading surface when you fold the back seats. In the back there is plenty of headroom and quite good legroom unless of course you slide the whole bench forward to get more space in the boot. Now interestingly enough the floor isn't flat. Now that's strange because the Renault Capture is a strictly front-wheel drive car. See these uh, strings here, elastic strings? Uh, this is the remains of the Renault Capture concept car in which the whole seats were made with uh, such strings. That was quite interesting. Now this solution has two drawbacks. One, well you can't really hold anything here and two, Imagine your kids or drunk buddies. Speaking of kids and drunk buddies, Renault offers removable and washable seat covers. Hopefully it's not something you'll do very often, but I'll see if they're easy to remove and put back. In the front it's a déjà vu from Renault Clio and unfortunately, like in the Clio, there's not much to say about the cup holders, but you get the coolest glove box I've ever seen. <laughs> Come on! This test model is equipped with things like climate control, sat-nav and a reversing camera. The R-Link infotainment system is simple to use and motivates to drive in an eco-friendly manner. The more observant among you probably already noticed uh, this test example is equipped with an automatic gearbox, a double clutch if you're anal. There is no other option for the 1.2 TCE engine. In case of the 0.9 TCE engine you can get only a manual and in some markets you can get a manual or an automatic for the 1.5 diesel engine. Now, this is fine when you're driving around the city, however problems start when you want to overtake or take advantage of a gap and you need to accelerate really fast. Now, for most of the time you'll be driving this car in eco mode, which slows down reaction of the engine and the gearbox. So, if you want to accelerate, it's best to actually switch the eco mode off, which, well, you can do with a button which is down here somewhere but it's down next to the handbrake, next to the third button for the cruise control and, uh, you know, when push comes to shove, you might not find it. Renault claims uh, this car will do 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers in combined cycle, but I'm afraid this is only a figure used in the emission tests. In real life, you'll struggle to get anything less than 6.5 liters in combined cycle. Renault Capture is one of these strange cars that, uh, even if it's not very involving to drive, it's still very fun. Um, yeah, I know it's loud and it's bumpy, but I feel like there's an adventure waiting for me around every corner. Even if the only adventure that this car can handle is going over a curb.
I admit I didn't expect much from the Renault Capture and now I'm really pleasantly surprised. Uh, the car turned out to be much more fun than I expected. I do realize that uh, some of you may prefer the more refined design of Peugeot 2008, but the Renault Capture is a car I could imagine in my driveway. If you're looking for a small crossover, watch my reviews of Peugeot 2008 and Opel Mokka. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. You'll find more reviews here. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel.